hello, Andrew Moody. <laughs> you <did. laughs> Well, thank you. And this is an amazing space. This is the Calvary Baptist Church. That's right. On Main, on Main Street in Toronto. Yeah. 72 Main. Yeah. Right. And this is beautiful. Uh, tell me, actually, about, um, you were talking about some of the stained glass windows. Oh, um, well, that one at the very back of uh -huh. the uh, church above the balcony. Uh -huh. um, the minister here, uh, before World War II, uh, he uh, enlisted and became an army chaplain in World War II and went over to Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had this vision of building this building when he got back. And, uh, and he said, oh, wait a minute, I've got all this wreckage uh, from European cathedrals, uh, stained glass all littered all over the ground. Mm -hmm. he, <laughs> he put the... Uh, things in cardboard boxes and ship them back to <laughs> back to <laughs> Toronto, and um, that uh, the window at the very back of the church is made mm. up of all of these little bits and pieces of stained glass uh, from mm. uh, the World War II in Europe. That's amazing. Uh, it's a sort of dedicated uh, memorial uh, yeah. window. It's amazing, also. But when you told me that story, I thought. I wonder if he ever worried that somebody from Europe would come to the church and go, hang on, <laughs> 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 I <am> a winter. <laughs> That's ours. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, I don't know. It's still, uh, anyway, that's, that's really quite beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, the reason that we're doing it in the church is that uh, when I was uh, a young Turk mm -hmm. uh, studying theology at McMaster, uh, I was the student assistant at this church to the same uh, ex-chaplain uh, major uh, Bob Snade. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, so I was... Uh, I felt that I was the opposition. That this was a fairly comfortable uh, suburban church, a beach church, and comfortably uh, uh, off. And uh, the uh, I felt that the minister uh, had uh, just uh, was trying to make his uh, com his congregation too comfortable. Right. So whenever I got the chance to preach, which I did every couple of weeks, uh, mm -hmm. once in the morning and once at the evening service, mm -hmm. um, I would uh, feel the need to afflict the comfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> as opposed to comfort the afflicted. Right, interesting. <laughs> so, uh, and then we kind of turned up here from time to time over the ensuing years yeah. when I was busy being a playwright. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, finally, they uh, made me minister emeritus. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I went from student assistant to minister emeritus in one leap. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good career path. Yeah, That's pretty it, and it doesn't mean anything. I, they don't even give me a parking spot. There are no <laughs> perks involved, but I get hauled in to preach every so often or oh, conduct great. a funeral or a, a wedding. Mm -hmm. And do you, every now and again, do you, uh, you know, uh, afflict, afflict the, the comfortable? The comfortable? <laughs> Do you still do that? I don't know. Maybe listening to me preaches enough of an affliction. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's not true. So let's, well, let's talk about um, your early life. First, let's talk about your, your parents. Um, my uh, father was a central Ontario farm boy mm -hmm. uh, from near Dalrymple. Uh, mm -hmm. It's close to Seabright. Right. Which is close to Aurelia. Right, right. right. Uh, so my mother uh, was a Barbadian. She was a West Indian uh, immigrant who came to Canada in the 30s, mm -hmm. picked fruit, worked as a domestic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, eventually started training as a nurse, uh, found her way, she did her training in Aurelia, at right. the Soldiers Memorial Hospital in Aurelia, and met my dad who was uh, in the hospital for tonsillitis. Right. Um, and uh, they, uh, uh, they got married, uh, and I came along shortly afterwards. I was born in Toronto, but they moved back to Aurelia. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Dad went to war. 
Uh, right. He was a tank driver, got blown up a couple of times, mm -hmm. uh, but made it back. I remember, I was like five when, uh, when he came back from uh, the war. Mm -hmm. And um, we put a, we were living in an apartment above a, a on the top story of a house and uh, put a big picture uh, saying uh, on the on the balcony saying welcome home daddy and I uh, I remember uh, we had to go to London Ontario uh, because that's where his unit was demobilized right, okay. and I can remember the soldiers coming through the the lines of people waiting and some of them wounded and mm -hmm. uh, uh, crutches and so on and my father uh, now, my mom and dad didn't get along very well. Uh, they, they fought for most of their lives. Hmm. Um, and I wrote a play called Drift uh, hmm. uh, after my dad had died, but uh, my mother saw it. It was uh, um, done a couple, two or three times in a couple of... In, uh, in, I think it was done at Blythe, and it was mm -hmm. done um, at the Globe Theatre first uh, mm -hmm. in Regina, right. and in Winnipeg as well, right. at theater, Prairie Theatre Exchange. Right. And um, uh, she said that she was going to sue me. <laughs> 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 My mother was a feisty sort. <laughs> She felt like too many family secrets were out in the open. I, uh, maybe, see. maybe, yeah. She right. didn't know where I got all that stuff. I think I had kind of uh, absorbed it through my pores. Right. Uh, as uh, uh, So I thought I was making up this stuff. Right. It was basic. it was the fastest play I ever wrote. I, you know, I just, uh, I had a character who was a, a writer, a novelist, and he was setting uh, out to write a story about his mother in the first lines of the play, I think, is, is did she drift or did she decide to ha live the life that she lived? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that was, uh, uh, so, I, uh, so it was easy to write because I was the writer writing, and then she appears over the writer's shoulder and says, nah, that didn't happen like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of stuff that probably from your childhood just yeah. bubbled up even without you consciously being aware of it. Yeah. And just made its way onto the page. Yeah. Do you write that like that a lot? Do you? No. Know? Okay. No. Usually, um, I'm pretty careful about uh, seeing where I'm going in the, in the right. and sometimes it's like pulling teeth. Yeah. 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 As you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like laying yeah. bricks sometimes, too. Yeah. Now, you, um, oh, and also, too, I wanted to know about, like, what foods did you eat? Like, what foods would she make at home? Were they different from Canadian oh, foods? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that was one of the sources of, of contention in oh, really? my family. Um, Dad came back uh, from the army uh, not wanting to eat uh, anything to do with lamb. Hmm. My mother liked lamb. Every Christmas we would get a care parcel from uh, Barbados mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, uh, guava cheese and uh, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, uh, dr sort of dried flying fish and various mm -hmm. things like that. So <laughs> we had, uh, I had this sort of neat uh, uh, combination of very traditional central Ontario foods yes, with <laughs> meat and potatoes for right, sure right. every meal mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then these odd little things that would come our way every so often mm -hmm. or visiting West Indians who uh, yeah. uh, uh, brought a whole different flavor man mm. exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and spicy too I'm yeah. sure yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me about um, your uh, studies and uh... ah well early on uh, you know like the first real but there were two theater things that happened in, uh, when I was a kid mm -hmm. that I think uh, really made a profound impression on me yeah. one was uh, uh, we went to the Red Barn Theater which was a summer stock company uh, right. on lower end of Lake Simcoe, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we saw a production of Skin of Our Teeth, okay. the Thornton Wilder play, and, uh, about a, a, a family that starts from the beginning of time that's the, is, uh, and uh, comes to the present. And uh, it was the... That, I was so amazed that a piece of theater could actually uh, be that profound mm -hmm. and, and be able to sum up the human condition in that way. The other one was Stratford. The, uh, the second year of St Stratford's existence, uh, I went to uh, see um, Oedipus Rex, mm. which I liked because it had my name in it, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, and uh, we had this, uh, you know, it was, it was still the tent, Right. And uh, the idea of the fanfares and the, and then walking into the tent and uh, the uh, incense bearers uh, fill the tent with this brown uh, aromatic smoke. Mm -hmm. And then you see these huge figures in their masks right. uh, and their platform mm -hmm. uh, sandals. I forgot what the Greek name is for that, those. Mm -hmm. uh, emerging out of this this fog um, and it, I was taken immediately into into that uh, Douglas Campbell played Oedipus that year um, oh. and uh, it was uh, the most amazing uh, thing that that just captured my whole imagination and my my sense of the idea of ritual mm -hmm. of, uh, and uh, uh, so from then on I, you know, I really loved. I, I, when I was in high school, I'd go to the Aurelia Library and I'd read all the plays of Shaw and Shakespeare, and I'd do parts to myself, and I'd assume an Olivier-esque uh, voices, yeah, of <laughs> kind of. of uh, uh, um, and then I was in the in the plays at, in high school, and uh, mm -hmm. I even got to direct. Uh, one in the my final year that went to the uh, the uh, high school drama festival. Um, uh, so I was Mr. Drama there, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to McMaster and I continued to do the same thing, sort of act and and direct and. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I couldn't write plays. I tried to write plays. Uh, really? Uh, uh, well, you couldn't. In they well, all look fake. Like I, I was uh, fake classic or fake right. whatever. Uh, so the first play I wrote, uh, I, I, I decided I would take theology and uh, mm -hmm. that I would become a Baptist minister. See, yeah. uh, but why I did you decide that? I, uh, why did you decide I, that? Why did I decide that? Yeah. Well, it was part. It was it, it was it parallel to my interest in theater. Right. Um, okay. I. I would get to write sermons and uh, and tell stories, and I had tell stories, and I had this uh, th this real sense of uh, like I I did the the evangelical Baptist thing. I went up mm -hmm. during the evangelical call at yeah. a, a service in a, in uh, in the church in Aurelia. Yeah. So uh, it, it wasn't that I I've never dismissed that part of my experience. Mm -hmm. You see. Uh, so, but it was. I was hoping I would find some way. You can see that if those are my two formative theatrical experiences, mm -hmm. that there's immediately something um, profound, something deep that 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 you um, you, you uh, uh, it just you just can't dismiss. Yeah. Um, Theatrically or religiously, right? right. right. Uh, and I was hoping to find some way of, of maybe doing a theatrical career within the church institution. So did you write a play within a? Well, uh, by, uh, when I got to the uh, end of my divinity college mm -hmm. uh, experience at McMaster, uh, I persuaded the powers that were uh, mm -hmm. to let me write a play as my thesis. Right. Uh, so I wrote a play called The Invitation, uh, 
uh, which was about a little old man uh, living in an apartment with a very domineering, uh, dictatorial, oppressive woman. Now, I, this may say something about what kind of relationship I was going through at that time <laughs> with, with the, the girlfriend I had then. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, you, t you, you get your images from real life, don't you? Absolutely. Uh, so, you can sue her as well. But, but basically, to, to step back a little bit from <laughs> what my personal life, uh, what I was trying to get at mm -hmm. was uh, the, the notion that in, in terms of faith, I felt that what God was doing was issuing you um, an invitation uh, to, um, to God's love. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, uh, the phone rings. It's never rung before. And it's an invitation to the old man to attend a party. Mm -hmm. And this allows him to stand up to this domineering old woman mm -hmm. who feeds him dog food yes. and treats him in an infantile way. Mm -hmm. So under that, there's a, there's a, a real kind of theology, mm -hmm. uh, a theology that's, um, uh, that's about acceptance mm -hmm. and uh, uh, about... Uh, uh, offering people a, a courageous way to live. How is it received? Well, um, I passed. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. And you also said that it was in the style of Ionesco, is that correct? It, yeah, it was, it was in the style of Ionesco, because I, uh, I, I was fond of that. I directed, uh, I'd, uh, directed the bald soprano and, uh, right. uh, uh, while well, I was at university, and... Uh, <coughs> And I liked the I liked uh, the absurdists, uh, right. and I thought this would be a good way to tell parables, right? right of course. Uh, so uh, yeah. So then I decided to uh, that I had been at some workshops in theater and religion, so I went uh, to uh, Union Theological Seminary, a very prestigious uh, uh, school in New York City, and I, yeah, just at the Columbia, uh, where the Columbia campus is, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, to, uh, they had at that point uh, two or three people who were um, doing the the theater and theology sort of uh, routine. Uh, Bob Seaver, who was a, a, a Broadway director. Mm -hmm. uh, um, then uh, they also had a, a theologian, Tom Driver, uh, who uh, was a theater critic in New York City, right. as well as a theologian. Right. Um, Interesting. And uh, they had um, a, a scenic uh, designer. Um, they had uh, Bob Seaver brought in a dancer from the village to work with the with the uh, ministerial students uh, wow. in. Uh, in terms of uh, of their speech classes, so you can't you can't have vocal without physical, right? right? Yeah. And so uh, that was fun watching this uh, uh, this uh, willowy uh, modern dancer, um, uh, Carolyn Bilderback was her name, and she oh, okay. uh, uh, and all of the the. Uh, the minister, ministerial students had to take her course as part that was laid on. And of course, a lot of them were very cerebral and they sort of, what is, what's going on with this? She had them doing creative dance and wow. movement and stuff like that as part of their speech classes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, so there was, it was a real, uh, uh, kind of hotbed at that point. Uh, now you went to New York. It was what was the year? Nineteen sixty-seven. Yeah, uh, sixty-six, sixty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Which also, I mean, that was a pretty revolutionary time in American history. Oh, it was. I woke 